Hello, in this video, I'm going to introduce the idea of building custom plots. Um, often, I think people will try to force their data into one of the cookie cutter designs that Matplotlib or whatever tool they're using has. And so I think that a lot of the plots that really I find um, amazing are ones where people thought about, well, what is the best design for this data? And then they did whatever necessary was to design the plot for that, even if it wasn't one of the standard um, options in one of these tools. Um, let me give you an example of that, maybe something that that's not, wouldn't be so easy to do in Matplotlib. Um, here I have uh, this map of the United States, and let me, can I zoom in a little bit here? And there's basically this scatter plot um, on top of a geographic map, and instead of just drawing a little point for each um, point in the scatter, they draw this little line. And what each of these lines represents on this picture is an airport in, in the United States. And um, it turns out that when you're, I'm not really a pilot, but when it turns out when you're flying a plane uh, and you're taking off, you want to be flying into the wind. That just makes it easier to take off. And so some very cool patterns emerge here. You can see that in the middle of the country, we have these uh, north-south winds. If I look on at Florida over here, for example, I can see there's all of these east-west winds. And so we get this very interesting um, uh, picture of all these airports. And if I was trying to do something like this and I was just using a regular scatter plot in Matplotlib, uh, I, I wouldn't have such a stunning result. So that's what I want to do. I want to teach you how we can build custom result uh, plots. And uh, it's actually not as hard as you might think. Um, we need to learn how to draw a few things. We have to be able to draw uh, maybe boxes and lines and circles and points. And uh, if you can do all of those things, well, then you can write the code to really build whatever you want, right? All, graphics kind of boils down to these things. So if we're drawing these things, let's say I'm drawing a line, for example, um, I, I might need to specify where the two endpoints of the line are. And to do that, I may have to have some coordinates. And so uh, we have to think carefully about the coordinate systems um, that Matplotlib has, if we're going to be basing our work on Matplotlib. And uh, so here I have um, a tutorial, which I'm not assigning or anything. I just want to show you that it's here. Um, and this is talking about how we can transform between different coordinate systems. And it says right up front, as you want to push the limits of custom figure generation, you have to understand this stuff. And there are all these different coordinate systems that we can use. I'm going to be showing some of those today, just in the context of drawing circles on uh, axes areas, right? So we're going to see how as we uh, use different coordinate systems, we're going to get very different pictures and try to build some intuition for that. Okay, so I'm going to head over here. Uh, to my notebook, and I am going to uh, import matplotlib uh, dot pyplot as as plt, and I'm going to say plt dot subplots, and um, and and subplots. I I could say something like n columns, and I could get multiple diff little subplots within the same figure. Um, I'm not trying to do that right now, uh, which means I'm just trying to return a figure and an AX, right? If I if I was passing something else in here, then I'd be returning an array of axes. Objects, well, now it's a little bit strange because it sounds plural, but I'm only getting one. So I'm gonna do that, and I get my little area. So, so that's good. Um, let's try to create a circle um, on top of it. And so I'm gonna say plt.circle. And there's different shapes that we can get from, uh, from plt. I'm going to say circle, and when I call circle, I have to pass in a tuple with an X uh, and in a Y position, and then I also have to have a, a radius. Okay, so um, let, let's just try to draw it in the middle of this picture we have above. So maybe I'll say 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5, and let's say a radius of, of 1. And so I do that, and um, it returns this uh, circle patch object. And so let me capture that in a variable. Just creating a circle doesn't automatically um, update um, any of our figures. What we actually have to do is we have to say something like um, ax.add, you see this is a patch object, so I'm going to say add patch p. And, um, and so that's not quite working yet. There's a couple things that we're going to have to do. Um, one of the things that we're going to have to do is make sure that this is in the same cell where I'm actually generating it. So I'm going to take this back here. And, uh, and run this, and, uh, and, and now I get actually this huge circle. Maybe I should make that a little bit smaller, huh? 
I'm gonna do that, and I and I get my circle there. Um, so be careful uh, when you're creating um, these patch objects and adding them to AX areas. Uh, never add the same uh, patch object more than once. If I want to have multiple circles, I should uh, create multiple circle objects and add them separately. Um, just for being future proof and, and kind of thinking forward what I might be doing in upcoming videos, I'm going to change this from add patch to add artist. Um, and in matplotlib, uh, patch is a kind of artist, right? So there's going to be other things like text or things like that that um, you know, everything is an artist. It's kind of a strange name for something that's being drawn instead of somebody that's drawing. But a, a circle is an example of a patch, which is a kind of artist. And so that's what I'm going to do. And that runs exactly exactly the same. So, so that's all good. Um, and I can change different things about the circle if I would like. I could say things like, well, um, let's set, uh, uh, you know, a fill color. Um, maybe I can make the circle red if I would like. Um, let me just check my notes here. Um, I'm doing that wrong. Uh, actually, it's face color uh, is the, the front of it. Um, I could also set uh, a line color if I wanted to. Um, let, let me actually I'm just try to flip this. I'm going to say the line color is red and then the face color is empty. Um, and what, what am I doing now? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, not line color, edge color. Great, so I can do that. So I can get uh, an empty red circle. Um, I can make it wider if I want. I can say line width equals three, and I get a thicker, um, thicker circle right there. And uh, and so that's all all good. Um, you you might notice that I keep calling this thing a, a circle, and uh, is that true? On some level, it looks more like an oval. Um, on the other hand, if I look along the x-axis. I see that it has a width of uh, 0.2. And if I look on the y-axis, I see it has a height of 0.2. So even though visually it's not a circle, um, with respect to the data, that's definitely a, a circle. And so that's one of the things we're going to be talking about. How can we think about um, when I'm drawing a circle? Is it a circle with respect to the data? That's one coordinate system. Or uh, is it a circle with respect to actual space on the screen? That's another kind of circle with another coordinate system. So to explore this idea a little bit further, um, what I'd like to do is, is kind of compare two things side by side. And so I'm going to add this here, and I'm going to say n columns equals 2 this time. And now this uh, a, uh, x is actually a list. I have two ax objects, one for the left-hand side, one for the right-hand side. If I want to, um, I mean, I could do this. I could pull them out like this. Um, the other thing I can do in Python is called unpacking. If I know that I'm getting something here which is uh, has two entries in it, I could just put my tuple here and I could say ax1 and ax2, um, and that would be perfectly fine. So let me let me do this down here now. Um, I'm going to add the same circle and um, like this. And what I'm actually going to do is put this into a function because I'm going to be drawing lots of circles um, as, I, as I have more examples here. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call this a relative circle. Relative because it's going to be relative to the coordinates of a particular um, AX area. And, um, and I should pass in a, a few things. I guess I should pass in what area am I going to be drawing that in. Maybe the area will be either AX1 or AX2, um, an X, and then, and then a Y. And so I'm going to have that, and then I'm going to do all this drawing here. And let me just uh, I'll snug that up a bit. And I'll say that I want to add this to the area that is passed in. And I'm going to have my x, y. So that's all good. Um, let me draw a relative circle on the left-hand side. So I'm going to say uh, ax1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And you can see I got that. You can see, comparing to last time, the oval is drawing the other way now, right? Because it's still a circle with respect to the data, but my axes are, are very different. Um, just really to make this uh, clearer, let, let me do this over here. I'm going to say ax2.setx limit, and I'm going to go from, oh, I, I, I don't know, I'll go from, uh, uh, from negative. 0 0.1 to, I don't know, 3. Let's do that. And, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the same circle 
on the right hand side and in the same place and I'm going to see well the, so the way the circle looks totally depends on the coordinate system uh, I'm working in. Now it, it turns out there's also um, a coordinate system for the whole figure right so this is ax1 this is ax2 and the figure is this whole big thing and um and it's a little bit harder to see the coordinate system for the figure because i don't have these nice numbers like we do down here but the way the figure works is that it goes from zero zero in the bottom left up to one one in the top right so if i try to draw the same circle on top of my figure this should be roughly in the center of my picture and it is right it's spanning these two um, these two areas so that's all good right so i can do that um i can also uh, if i want I, I could imagine trying to build some sort of um uh, uh absolute circle right I, i'd like to actually have something that's visually a circle on here and if i if i head back to this transformations i can see that if i want to be dealing with inches instead of um maybe the, my data scale i i can use this transformation here it's called figure dot dpi dpi means dots per square inch uh, scale transform kind of a clunky name but if i can use that thing and specify that's the coordinate system i want to use well uh then then i'm going to be able to uh draw something that visually looks like a circle um it turns out whenever i draw a circle or anything one of these coordinate systems is, is being used and so when i'm uh doing things like this back here right i create this circle and then i'm adding it uh, it, it's really as if I'm passing in something like this. So it's like I'm passing in a transform equals, and, and if this was an AX1, it would be something like AX1 dot uh, transform data, right? Something like that. And, and so that's all happening automatically. I don't need to worry about that. If I actually want to draw something that visually looks like a circle though, then I'm absolutely going to have to pass something in there. And so, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in um, absolute circle, and um, l l let's make it a little look a little bit different this time, just so that uh, it's clear the two things I'm dealing with. So I'm going to have a solid blue circle this time, um, like that is fine, I guess. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller, uh, zero point zero seven five. And um, and now uh, when I'm doing this, I have to pass in what transformation I want. So my transformation is going to be an absolute coordinate. So it'll look like a legitimate circle uh, uh, visually. And so I could do that. I could say fig.dpi uh, scale transform. I'm going to do that. And so I'm going to try to create a new circle just like that. And, um, and so I'm going to say absolute circle and just like last time and now it's going to be a blue circle and, and you can see it's way down here on the bottom left right so that must be it must be what it must be like half an inch up half an inch up from the bottom left of my of my figure what if i actually wanted to draw um that blue circle kind, kind of in the middle right here right i mean i could i could do that things like this i could try to move it up a bit and keep playing with it until it got roughly to the center the other thing I could do is when I come back here and I'm creating my subplots, I could say what my figure size is. And maybe I'll say it's something like, you know, eight by four. So I do that. And, um, and, and now if it's eight by four, then I guess the center is four inches, two inches, right? Half of the dimensions, right? So if I want to get a circle roughly in the center, I'm going to say four and two and uh, voila, that's roughly in the center of this whole thing. It may be a little hard to see, right? Because there's kind of weird padding um, in places, but that, that should be roughly um, the center of, of what I'm dealing with here. Okay, so that's all good. Um, let's uh, let's uh, think a little bit about if I wanted to draw a round circle um, actually on top of one of these axes areas. Right, so that's going to be a little trick, tricky, right? I want to figure out the x and y based on the data, but I want to figure out the radius of the circle in absolute terms, right? So I can, 
I can choose the position based on the data and then still get a nice visually round circle. So how, how, how would I do that? Um, what I'm going to have to do, and, uh, and maybe what I'll, I'll aim for is I'll say, um, let, let's create the circle right here where I say it's at um, two and, uh, and 0 0.5 on the right hand side. Um, I, I have to calculate what the absolute coordinates are for that. Okay. And uh, the way I can do that is I can say fig dot, let me look back here. Uh, actually, I don't want to do fig, I want to do ax. I want to do this uh, trans data. Which I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say ax2 dot trans data. And so this is a transformer, and so I can use it to transform points to the overall scale. Okay. And so what I'm going to do here is pass in my data coordinates. All right. So I'm going to pass in um, a tuple, and I'm going to say, I said I want it to be right over here, right? So I'm going to say 2 and 0 0.5. Okay, and so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get this very large number here, and these are in dots where I have some number of dots per square inch. So this is not quite what I want. I really want to get this to inches, and so to get to this to inches, I have to divide by figure dot dpi. Right, so I do that, and, and this is actually telling me, well, how many inches should I go over? I should go 6.3 inches over and 2 inches off, and that should be roughly right here at, at 2 and 0.5. So this is my x and my y, and in theory, I'm going to actually run into a little problem here that we're going to talk about, um, but in theory, I should be able to do absolute circle uh, you know, on my figure, and then x and y, and it's not quite right, is it? I, I, I think that I wanted it right here. It, it ended up there. So, so what's going on here? Um, it, it, it turns out that what Matplotlib will do when it's generating something for Jupiter is it'll first generate its plot, and uh, everything is fine. And then at the last minute before Jupiter actually shows it, it will crop out any white space. Okay, so when it crops out the white space, you know, before there was kind of more, um, you can imagine that there was more uh, padding to the left here. When it cropped that out, everything moved left, but these points, which are, are in absolute terms now, stayed the same. And so that's why this ended up looking like it's a little bit to the right of where it is supposed to be. So I may have to configure um, uh, Jupiter to not do that, right? That's kind of annoying that it does it. Uh, because it makes it harder to make pictures like this. And so if I go to my configuration, I can, uh, these are called like magic commands. I say magic configuration. Um, I can see that they have something called inline backend. And this has to do with those inline figures that I'm dealing with. So I'm going to say config inline backend. And it gives me all of these options I can deal with. And the one that's creating all my trouble is these print figure keyword arguments and this setting, this B box, inches tight, that's what's causing it to do the cropping. And so what I have to do is something like this. I have to come up here and I have to say config inline backend dot print uh, uh, figure keywords equals, and instead of this default, I don't want it to crop it, so I don't want to have this tight here. Um, I, I just actually want to say none. Let me run that and run that. And, and now it's beautiful, right? I see I. Uh, for one, I see that while well, I have all this extra padding over here, right? And I see that this is exactly where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be at two on the x-axis and 0.5 on the right. That's where I wanted it to end up. And, uh, and it's round, it's visually round. So I'm able to use the inches coordinate system for the radius and, uh, and, and also use data to figure out the position of it. And so you could easily imagine how I might build um, a scatter plot by this. You also notice that I mentioned this before, right? It didn't quite look like that was in the center before. Now it actually does visually look like it's in the center, um, in the center of, of the plot. So looking at this code here, um, there, there's one other thing I want to bring up, which is this. 
Um, when I'm figuring out the positioning of things, I'm using this transformer, right? I'm saying I want to do it in absolute terms based on the overall FEG, right? So, so the question here is, why do I even have to pass in this area, right? Why am I passing in an area to add it if I'm ultimately using this FIG? Does it even matter uh, what I'm doing? Let, let me make this a little bit uh, bigger since um, uh, this time so I'm going to do it like this. And, and let's think about this point right here, right? So, so I'm going to do this. Let me uh, make a copy of that one. I think that was right here. Here, I'm just going to put that down to the bottom. I had that circle there. Let, let me create another one of those that bumps up a little bit. Maybe I'll say one and two. And so I have those two circles on top of each other. And what will happen if I, instead of having um, both of them in figure, I say I want to have one of them in AX1. Do you see what happens there? there there's a difference here. So, so on one of these, I'm doing the add artist. And when I do the add artist to the axes object, well, then it'll truncate it if it's not out of there. When I do it to the figure object, well, I, I, I can go anywhere. And, and so I'm doing kind of a couple complicated things here. Um, one is I'm using the figure in terms of figuring out where it goes. And then I'm using different areas to figure out how it gets cropped. Um, and then the, similarly down here, uh, I want to use data coordinates um, for the position, but I want the radius to be in absolute coordinates. And so what that means is I have to do this uh, manual transformation step where I transform my data coordinates to inches. And in that way I can, up here, I just use inches for everything and I, I get the effect I want where uh, round circle um, at the correct uh, data coordinate. Okay, so that was a kind of an intro to matplotlib um, coordinate systems and, uh, and that's going to be important if you're trying to build custom visualizations.